In today's video, we're going to talk about an everyday carry piece of gear that I always have with me, and I think you should too. I'm talking about a tourniquet, and I've got five different brands of tourniquets here. We're going to take a look at each one, pros and cons about each one, and my experiences with each one. We're going to talk about that coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for trustworthy information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name's Brian. Thanks for joining me. In front of my old school green screen, this is not, this is like a little a tapestry, so I uh, thought it'd add a little, little interest to, to the uh, boring wall behind me. So anyway, as I said, we're going to talk about tourniquets today, and a tourniquet is something I carry every day with me always. I think it would be a good idea for you to do the same because it's a way you can potentially save your life or somebody else's life. We've got five different brands of tourniquets. Let me say right up front, every single thing tourniquet we're going to look at today works. No issues there, but there are some significant differences and a little bit of controversy about, about a couple of these. So we're going to get in, briefly into that, talk about the whole TCCC thing, and we're going to actually show you um, which tourniquet I, I, th I like the best out of these and why but first before we do that I'm gonna give a big shout out to the folks at Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring this video video we're gonna do a real quick Sportsman's Guide military surplus minute because if you're not familiar with Sportsman's Guide not only do they have a really great site for all sorts of outdoor gear but they have the largest military surplus site online and what I try to do in these minutes is just give you an example of some stuff that maybe you might find on there very often by the time this video airs that stuff's already sold out and they've got some new stuff in but they get stuff in all the time I'm sorry that's a bug it's driving me batty but this is something i thought was pretty cool uh, it is an msr inline microfilter so if you're using a, a hydration bladder which i like to use uh, this is an msr filter that i found on sportsman's guide military surplus that goes right in your line so you can make sure that even if you have to get some some less than clean water you can it'll be clean when it comes into your into your mouth and comes out of, out of the end of the drinking tube so uh, just an, an example of the kind of things you can find on sportsman's guide military surplus site i don't know if these will be there now when you're watching this video but you never know what's going to be there and sometimes there's some really cool deals and maybe something you need so i always check them before i buy gear so anyway you can save 20 bucks on any order over 100 dollars by using the coupon code survival 20. so Hopefully, it's been helpful, and thanks again to the folks at Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring this video. Now, let's talk about tourniquets. So, first of all, let me just say right up front that I'm not any sort of a, a medical expert, but all the information I'm going to share with you today is based on things that I have learned from people that are trained. And on my experience in, in both going through a, a trauma medical class and uh, in actually s simulated use of these tourniquets, or actually real use of them with simulated wounds uh, in a force on force class. So I've got a little experience using all these and also um, I've done a lot of research on them. So here we go. Let's talk about tourniquets. So what a tourniquet is, first of all, is something that goes around an extremity, either your arm or your leg, to stop uh, arterial blood flow so you don't bleed to death because um, all of us human beings have got a, a big artery here in, this, in, your, in our arms and we've got a big artery in our legs. And if those arteries are cut or through a wound, um, whether it's a gunshot or a car crash or whatever, um, literally you could bleed, bleed to death in a matter of minutes. Real quick story, just to tell you why this means so much to me. My oldest son is 34 years old now. When he was probably eight or nine, eight, maybe 10 years old, he uh, was at an older school and was knocking on the window, trying to get somebody's attention outside, and the window broke, and it cut his arm, I think it was his left arm, sli sliced an artery in here, and he was bleeding like a stuck pig. They tried direct pressure and could not get it to stop. One of the teachers actually had a little bit of training, and she was able to use a pressure point at his arm and stopped the bleeding and the um i mean every time i tell the story i get choked up but the paramedics told her if she hadn't done that he would have bled to death right then he would be dead by the time they got there so what a tourniquet does it it, it, it does the same thing it cuts off the flow at the, from the blood down the artery so it's really a really simple thing you can do to potentially save somebody's life and honestly if you're like me and you can still carry a weapon um you should, you should absolutely carry a tourniquet because the chances are you're going to need this a lot sooner than you need this, right? So, that being said, there's a lot of misinformation about tourniquets out there. Um, a lot of that information actually comes from literally, literally from the Civil War. I remember hearing when I was a kid that don't use a tourniquet, it's a last resort. Well, 
um, th thanks to kind of a weird to say thanks to but thanks to our experiences in warfare over the last century we have learned that tourniquets save lives and as long as they are treated within a reasonable amount of time, they don't lose limbs. The people I talked to said the, it, within six to eight hours, there's really no danger of, of limb loss or even significant nerve damage. Most of us are in a civilian environment. And so if, if we're in a situation where we need to use a tourniquet, the chances are we'll be able to get to help within six to eight hours. And honestly, if you're more than six or eight hours away, and you don't use the tourniquet, you'll have bled to death by then if you needed a tourniquet. So it's really a, a choice of, of dying or not dying. So there are basically two different style tourniquets. There are windless tourniquets, which have a windless, and basically you crank them and it tightens up. And then there are elastic tourniquets. And I've got some of those here. And they use the uh, force of elasticity to shut, to compress. Because what a tourniquet does, it compresses it compresses your artery typically against a bone because your arteries run kind of parallel with the bone. It compresses that artery and it stops the blood flow, whether it's your arm or your leg. I'm showing my arm because it's easier to show on camera. So we're going to talk about these tourniquets and we're going to start with uh, what is probably one of the most popular tourniquets out there and is the CAT tourniquet and it's the combat application tourniquet. And this is the one that is the official tourniquet, so to speak, of the U.S. Army. And this is the one actually, it's got some sock fuzz on it because this is the one I carry in my ankle med kit because you can see how big it is. It doesn't weigh very much, but it's pretty bulky, so it's, it's difficult to carry these. You can't just stick them in your pocket, really. Uh, most of us can't, you know. And so I, I wear an ankle med kit. It's got this and a lot of other trauma stuff on it. But I'm just gonna show you how this one works, and then we'll talk about the other one. So this one is TCCC recommended, and that's the, uh, the people that approve um, combat um, medical stuff and they don't necessarily approve it but they recommend it so this one's passed their test and the way it works is you've got a strap here you got a buckle here and this is all full of velcro and then you have a windlass here and you're going to just tighten that windlass and it's going to tighten up the strap but the key to that there's two keys first of all you want to um, get this thing as tight as you can before you start cranking that windlass and then you want to crank that windlass until the bleeding stops and i'll just be honest with you it's going to hurt it, I've, I've used these several times in training and everything, and every time I put them on, it hurts. If it doesn't hurt, you probably don't have it on good enough. So another thing about tourniquets, uh, just generally turn any tourniquet, these especially, but especially windless tourniquets, you're gonna want to stage these so if you need them, you can get them out and they, they operate fast. So, so that when you need it, you just pop it out, and then if it's on yourself, you should be able to just put it around your arm like so, and then take the red tab. Oh, I just spilled my drink and um, pull it tight. So it's easier for me if I'm pulling this way than this way. So try to stage it when you put it on when you're pulling it this way. When you get it getting tight, just hit your Velcro. It doesn't have to go all the way around, just enough to stop it right there. And then just start cranking. And go ahead and pull your time tab out of the way because it's going to catch in this little notch here. And then just start cranking until the bleeding stops. And I'm just going to do a demo here on my arm because it, it hurts right now already. And we're going to lock it, and I'm going to check the pulse. And I got no pulse, so it worked. And you can see my hand's already changing colors. Now I'm going to get that sucker off because it hurts. <laughs> so, yeah, it hurts. Um, but it'll save your life. So that's how you use the combat application tourniquet. And they recommend, this, you should notice it says right there, it's a good idea just to write the time on here if you carry a Sharpie or something so that um, whoever does come, the EMT or the, or the ambulance people that come, uh, paramedics they don't know what time this tourniquet was put on that's just a, a good a good thing they need to know so they don't know how much time they have really before nerve damage starts because like i said this could be six or eight hours so that's a cat tourniquet and the price of a cat tourniquet is about 30 bucks 29 30 bucks on amazon it's a good tourniquet there's nothing these things are abs they absolutely work another similar tourniquet which is also t triple c um, recommended is the soft t tourniquet and it's uh, really similar to the cat tourniquet. A couple of differences are, A, it has a little hook here. And so you can um, unhook it like so and just clamp it around somebody's arm a little easier that way, maybe, instead of having to feed this through the uh, buckle. It's got a little different buckle. This one's metal. These have plastic. These are all plastic. But other than that, it operates the same. You'd want to put it around the arm or leg and then just tighten it up like so. And the cat tourniquet seems to get a little tighter easier but because I'm, I'm having trouble getting this thing tight because i have to it wants to slide when i pull it but same thing once you get it tight right there 
same thing you just twist it and this one has a little triangle here that you got to once you get it tight you got to pop over your pop over your windlass so I think the cat is a little easier to use for me because you don't have to try to manipulate that it slides slides a little better through here and this one has a little easy off on it though I, I prefer the cat over the soft tee just a little bit just because uh, I think it's a little easier for me to use um, on myself but those are two windless tourniquets that are both TCCC recommended now a quick word about TCCC I spoke to the people that make this next tourniquet and this is a recon tourniquet um, it's also a very very good tourniquet and they said they have tried to get they've tried to submit this to triple C for a testing or approval and triple C is not accepting anything so um, to my mind this is just as good if, if maybe even better than these and I'll show you why I like this recon tourniquet um, so by the way the soft tee is also about it's about 28 bucks so they're all they're both these two are close to 30 bucks the recon tourniquet is very similar to the cat tourniquet in its design it has this little loop here to, to, to catch your your um, windlass it has a it doesn't have a little hook it's got a pass-through buckle here so if you need the pros and cons of that are by the way if you need to take it completely apart and put it around somebody like you can't get it over their leg or whatever you can't slip it on this way if you have to take it off this way takes longer the soft tee does have an advantage there because you can unclip it so this you have to actually feed it through but other than that this works exactly like the uh, cat tourniquet you put it around I'm just doing it on my left arm because it's a little easier just pull it up like that pull it tight and you got your windlass you crank it and you hook it in here I'm not going to keep doing that with every tourniquet because it hurts and I don't want to hurt so what I do like about this one though is a it's got this little hole here you can really get a good good pull on it with your finger if your hands are bloody or slippery that that's a good a good feature of me in my mind it also has a metal windlass and the end of this windlass is a little orange to pull out it is a pin that you can write the time on here with it so it's all self-contained you don't have to have another pin anything like that so in my mind that's a pretty good good feature and this one also has a poly buckle but if you look inside here it has an aluminum core so it's a little stronger it's also got this extra bar stitching here to make it even stronger and the price on the uh, recon tourniquets are about uh, 13 bucks on recon's website and that's the gen 4 i will tell you if you go to amazon they're going to be 18 bucks and it's going to be the gen 3 and the difference in the gen 3 and the gen 4 is two major differences uh they don't have the extra the gen 3 does not have the extra line of stitching across here for reinforcement and the gen 3 does not have the the aluminum core buckle um, even though this one works just fine i'm not it i would trust my life to it it, it works just fine and and i say that because i've been People that I respect have told me that they tested them and they work just fine. So, those are the three different windless tourniquets we're going to look at, three different brands. There may be some other brands, but let me just real quickly say one more thing about that. I know this has turned out to be a little bit long video, but I think it's important, so we'll talk about that. And we're going to talk about testing. You just saw me test that tourniquet. All the tourniquet manufacturers I talk to uh, say that tourniquets are designed as single-use items. And, and my recommendation is that, A, you need to train and test all your gear. So buy two. Buy two tourniquets and use one for your training and testing and market. So and keep the other one for your absolute emergency use. Having said that, I recommend at least the one you're going to use, at least testing it one time to make sure that, it, that it's going to work. It's, it's not, it's not going to break. I say that because here are a couple of tourniquets that look very, very similar to the cat tourniquet. See, they, uh, they've got the red on the end, they've got uh, nylon stitching, they've got plastic buckles, um, but what they don't have is a windlass that won't break. I tested two of these tourniquets, and, and I think they are like um, Chinese copies of a cat tourniquet, I believe, because there's not a manufacturer's name on them anywhere, no markings whatsoever, but both of them, this is from one and this is from the other. Both of them, they snapped when I got them really, really tight. That's why I say at least test them once because you're going to trust your life to it. And then put it up, the one you're going to use that you're going to carry with you, and, and mark the other one for testing. So that's the windless tourniquets, and those all work really well. Now, let's get into the slightly controversial tourniquets because 
there has been some controversy uh, online mostly about these three tourniquets and the most popular one is the uh, it was formerly called the rats tourniquet i think they're calling this the rescue tourniquet now and i spoke with the folks at rescue tourniquets um, about this particular tourniquet because there's been a little controversy about it because it's so thin TCCC says the tourniquet's got to be an inch and a quarter, I believe, in width. And, and the reason is because if it's too narrow, there's a, there's a, a greater danger of, of nerve damage, right? So let me just give you an example and show you what I mean. Um, this is the rescue tourniquet. you got this loop on the end with a cleat on it. The way you use this tourniquet is you just make a loop out of it, right? Put it around your arm this way, and then you pull back against that loop. See what I'm doing? Pull it back against that loop. So you've got it like so. Then you can start wrapping around your arm. And what they recommend doing, pull it as tight as you can get it, and then start layering these beside each other. So you're gonna you'll, you'll increase the width of the overall tourniquet. And then just keep going. And you want to pull it as tight as you can until you get to the end where you can lock it in this cleat like so. And then let's just see. And yep. It hurts and I've got my pulse stopped. So it, it absolutely works. And actually, <clears throat> uh, there's been a study from Cambridge University recently, Cambridge Medical, that tested all three of these elastic type tourniquets, the uh, Rescue Tourniquet, the TK4, and the SWAT T tourniquet. And they were all shown to be as effective in stopping blood flow. So this one works. A um, couple of pros I like about this one. First of all, all these tourniquets are limited in size. Let me just show you. So you're not going to be able to get it down much, much smaller than that, right? Before you're going to be able to not be able to use it. So if you've got a small child whose arms may be this big around, these tourniquets, none of these tourniquets are going to work very well. Whereas uh, this tourniquet will work a lot better. It'll work really well on a small child. And it's also, let's just face it, it's a lot easier a lot smaller to carry one of these. You can either fold it up like so and put a rubber band around it, or uh, you can actually loop this through your belt loops or around your waist and carry it like that. I've seen that done and it works pretty well too. And you just always have it with you. So that's the, the um, rescue tourniquet, formerly called Rats. Works really well. And the price on these are about 18 bucks on Amazon. Another one I like, because this is a very small package, you can put this in your pocket, stick it in your sock. I used to carry mine in my sock before I started carrying an ankle kit. It's the TK4, it's another elastic type, and it's basically just got a hook on each end. The way you do this one is you start it around your arm like so, and then you just hook that in like so. So you, got, you, you hook it over the hook, right? And you pull it tight, and you just start wrapping it around your arm. Same, same as the other one. Try to keep it flat if you can, but pull it as tight as you can get it. And it's already an inch and a half wide, so that's good. Keep pulling as tight as you can get it. Like so. Just keep going. And when you get it completed, you just wanna take the other end of that hook and just hook it under, somewhere under here, just under itself. And I'll tell you, the only issue I had with these was getting that thing to hook and stay in a high stress environment. When I was doing my force on force training, and once again, it works. When I was doing my force on force training, you know, we had to simulate wounds and had to simulate putting a tourniquet on. Well, we actually didn't simulate, the tourniquet wasn't part wasn't simulated. And this was a little difficult for me sometimes to get hooked back under there um, in a stressful situation with one hand because I, you know, I was simulating a, or fixing a wound on myself. So, but they work and they're also extremely uh, lightweight and extremely compact. Just uh, put a little rubber band around it and stick it in your sock or whatever. So that's a TK4. Price on a TK4 is about 11 bucks on Amazon. So it's a really low budget way to make sure that you could potentially save yourself or somebody else's life. And then finally, my least favorite of these tourniquets, I'll be honest with you. I just, I don't care for them that much, but I think they work pretty well. It's a SWAT T tourniquet and it's a stretch wrap tourniquet like so. And the goal is to stretch it out enough so that you see these little, little, ovals there they turn into circles and that means you got it pretty tight and then this one you just basically you wrap it around your wound we'll try the other arm for this time because that one's getting getting kind of sore and just start wrapping and once you kind of get it it should stick to itself a little bit you start getting tight just pull the heck out of it i don't pay attention to the little little symbols on it i just pull it tight man just pull it tight 
have to keep pulling it tight. But for me, this one is not as easy to use and not as easy to really get tight and know I got it tight. And then you have to try to tuck it under itself somehow. And again, once you've got it tight, for, for me, it's really hard to do that tucking under itself because you already got this, this stuff is so tight, there's no room to tuck. So at least one handed. If you have two hands, if you're doing this for somebody else, it's a little bit easier, but I want to carry a tourniquet that I can use for myself. So I personally don't recommend this one, but it works. It's actually, it's, this is one of the ones that was tested in the Cambridge um, test, Cambridge medical test, and it works. What I do like about this, if you need to put a, a pad or, or a compress on, a, on the on the abdominal wound, this will reach around your abdomen and you can uh, wrap it around and tie it off. So, but other than that, this is, this is not the one I'm going to carry. Um, the one I'm going to carry is going to be either one of these or one of these, probably both. Um, so just to kind of wrap this up, um, I know it's been kind of a, a messy video, but uh, I, I do think, first of all, again, all these tourniquets that we just looked at work. One other thing about tourniquets, and I'll wrap this up. So I, I, um, right now, as I said, some of the uh, some of the stuff we learned about tourniquets, it just continuously evolves based on experience. And right now, the best practices that, that and I, this is not my opinion. This is what I've been told by trauma nurses and EMT and and military, um, you know, medics, is high and tight on the tourniquet. So if there's a wound on a, on an extremity, then that's when you use a tourniquet. And and don't try to put it, find the wound and put it. You know, used to say four inches above the wound. I think the best practice now is high and tight. So as close to the joint as you can get, as close to the armpit, as close to the groin as you can get. Be careful around there, and then put it on tight. A couple reasons for that. Reason number one is if there's a lot of blood for whatever reason and you think there's a wound six inches or an inch above the knee and you put it mid-thigh, there could be another wound above that you didn't catch because the blood's everywhere. If, if you put it high, as high as you can get it, you're going to have the best chance of making sure there's any wounds on that limb will be protected. And the second reason for it is if you cut an artery, sometimes that artery retracts up into the limb further. and they say four inches because it might not retract that much, but you really just never know. Um, that's why they just put it high and tight and you make sure you're covered. All those eventualities are covered. So that being said, um, whichever one of these tourniquets you decide to use, use one, carry one with you and train with it, practice with it. Like I said, get to and make sure that you've tested it. Test the one you're going to use one time and then put it aside and train with the other one. And, and not, I don't mean just make sure you know how it works. Put that sucker on and check your, your pulse and, and see if your pulse has stopped. Make sure you, can, you know how tight it needs to be and you know how to operate the thing. So if you need it for yourself or somebody else, that you'll be able to use it. And again, you know, think about that. That'll give you, do a couple things for you. It'll teach you how you need to use it and it'll show you uh, if you've got it staged properly and, and kind of the, the best thing you need to do. And don't just do it one time. Do it a bunch of times and keep doing it um, periodically to keep yourself refreshed because this is the most important life-saving piece of gear you can carry. So anyway, that is a hopefully a reasonably coherent look at uh, five different tourniquet brands and, and in two different styles, both the uh, windless style and the elastic style. And again, Everything I showed in this video, every single tourniquet works, except for the ones that were broken. Every tourniquet works. They all are very effective. So there you go. And I hope this has been helpful. Uh, once again, um, thanks for watching Survival on Purpose. And real quickly, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of these videos, just in case cancel culture cancels me, I invite you to go to survivalonpurpose.com slash subscribe. Get signed up for my weekly email newsletter. Every week I'll send you an email, just one a week, with any news offers or deals I think might be helpful to you and allow us to stay connected just in case uh, I get canceled because you just never know, do you? So anyway, I really sincerely, honestly appreciate the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You are watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident. So be prepared. I'll see you next time.